Hello everyone and welcome to Adam Shar Weekly. So in this video, I'm also presenting you another question that you'll have to think about it. So these are all critical thinking questions. There is no right or the wrong answer. I guess it in the end, it will be answer will be based on what you're trying to do. So here's the question. When I'm working with Swift UI, I occasionally have to create these view modifiers, right? So in this case, I'm creating a view modifier called rounded. I guess you can call it anything you want. And what this view modifier actually does is simply make sure that the text or whichever thing is applied to, like the link, is rounded with certain amount of a background color and also the foreground color. So you can already see that this is applied in multiple places. The implementation of this rounded is in the view modifiers folder or a group rounded and it kind of looks kind of like this. All right. Actually, I need to comment that out because I commented out the actual implementation. There we go. So this is how it actually looks like. And of course, in the view extension, I have created the rounded extension or the rounded function on the view itself, which uses a view modifier. And everything works perfectly fine. The question is, do we need to create a view modifier called rounded for this particular scenario? Or should we just add all the code in the view extension as the example that you can see over here is rounded too. Horrible name, by the way, but just to give you an example. So I can use rounded two in my screen and it will still work. So I can simply go ahead and say rounded two over here and it should just work as expected. So now the question is, should you use a view modifiers like the one that I created over here? Or in this case, should you create uh, my view extension and write all the code in the view extension. View modifier does have a little bit of advantages over view extensions. Uh, you can maintain state in them. You can also uh, add them to the Xcode library. I mean, I don't really normally do that, but you can if you want to. So in this case, when I'm writing this rounded, it's a little bit more extra code that I'm doing, right? I can use the same exact code and put it in a view extension as rounded to, and it will still work. But my preference is still to create view modifiers. And the reason my preference is still to use view modifiers is right now I only have one view modifier called rounded. But in the future, I can have other view modifiers like rounded, caption, this, that, 10 other view modifiers as my application grows. Whenever I have these kind of view modifiers, where do you think I'll be looking for all the view modifiers in my application? In the view modifiers folder, of course. I mean, right now I have around it, but you can think about it. I may have something called caption. I, I may have some other view modifiers, right? Now, if I create 10 view modifiers where eight of them are actual view modifiers and two of them are implemented in an extension, then now if it will still work, but now I have code in like different places. Some of them are in a view modifiers and some of them are actually in the extensions. So that means that you have structurally placed similar code in different places, which will still work, but it will be hard to look at like, oh, like you can say that, oh, eight of the view modifiers are in the view modifiers group, but like two of them or three of them are created as extensions. So I think my argument for this is that I would probably go with the approach of view modifiers because it is it allows me to automatically think that, oh, I'm using a view modifier over here. This is obviously a custom view modifier and the implementation for this view modifier will always be in the view modifiers. Now you can argue that nobody looks at the group folders or folder itself. Usually just people go and do that, right? And now you're in the implementation. And that's fine. I mean, if you want to do that, 
But keep in mind that you're working in a team also and not everyone will be doing those kind of things. Sometimes you actually do want to see all the different view modifiers, like all the folders containing your view modifiers, right? Over here we have screens folder that contains all the screens and the views folder contain all the views and the models folder contain all the models. So everything is kind of like arranged in that particular way. And that's why when I am creating these view modifiers, although these view modifiers can be created using extensions like this rounded too, I prefer the approach of actually creating it as a view modifier so that when I am 10 days or 10 weeks or 10 months from now, when I am looking at some code and I'm like, oh, rounded, oh, okay, I know where it is. Here we go, rounded, because it's in the view modifier because it is a view modifier. Now, if I was using something else over here, let's say caption, which by the way doesn't exist, so it's not gonna work, then I'm like, oh, I'm using a view modifier called caption. Oh, wait, there is no caption view modifier. Um, so, okay, so I'm confused, where is it? See, automatically, I obviously get confused with this. So, what is your opinion? Will you use a view modifier? Will you create a view modifier, which requires a little bit more code? Or will you create all of these different things as extension? Or will you create like eight of them in view modifier and two of them in extension? How will you decide? If you like this video and want to support my channel, then check out my courses on Udemy. I actually just released a brand new course on machine learning. It is called Create ML for iOS Developers. It is a beginner's guide. So this course is around like four hours long and it is going to uh, help you learn how to perform machine learning, how to train your model using custom data set, also existing data set uh, using Create ML. Apart from that, I also have some other courses like full stack iOS development using Swift UI and Vapor and Swift data declarative data persistence for Swift UI. So a lot of different courses I have been releasing uh, over the course of few months. So definitely check out the YouTube description for the link to the course.